house. I'm a bit nervous having to talk right after Shireen Razak. So it's a good thing there was a break in between. Um, okay, so I, um, I, I come from a Hakka a Chinese family that has been in India for four generations. And I'm now established in the university in the traditional territories of the Three Fives Confederacy of First Nations comprised of the Ojibwe, Ottawa and Potawatomi. My Canadian passport is a Western artifact that has erased uh, settled colonial history and bolstered meritocracy and neoliberal uh, multiculturalism. I am grateful um, to be speaking here today and thanks uh, the few, to all the organizers. Um, I, I speak not, um, not as someone who has uh, researched anti-Muslim racism or settled colonialism, but as someone who is puzzling through the current political moment in order to build a strategic solidarity by reaching out to other uh, racialized communities where, from where I stand. Um, I do also want to thank Amina, who was talking earlier, uh, for helping me through some of these ideas and for the numerous discussions we've had about this. Um, the turmoil we are experiencing today is at least in part due to the crisis in the legitimacy of American imperialism. The converging Orientalist discourses targeting Muslims and Asians are part of the escalation of securitization and militarization to assert control and expand the war-based political economy. Today's Orientalism is about maintaining white supremacy and racial capitalism that has serious consequences for those racialized as Asians and Muslims, both in the West and outside and in the redistribution of resources towards elite capitals uh, uh, and owners of uh, transnational corporate capital. I want to explore this uh, conjuncture as a common context of struggle among racialized peoples. Racial neoliberalism has created a new subject that is continuously precaritized pre and dispossessed through border imperialism, military violence, and the destruction of developing nations that is ideologically policed by mass mobilization of information and images and the production of failed states that arrest diasporics and citizens of developing countries and indigenous peoples in the marginalized space time. As Mignolo puts it, the colonial wound is the commonality among diverse decolonials who have been classified as underdeveloped mentally and economically. Connections have to be made among our various histories and experiences as Angela Davis reminds us about making geopolitical connections in, in uh, anti, uh, the abolitionist movement, the security agencies and the infrastructures used to monitor and regulate black communities in the US are the very same militarized ones policing the Palestinians. Today's Islamophobia and Sinophobia have deep historical and geopolitical roots and forerunners in how indigenous blacks and other racialized communities were dispossessed and policed and in European construction, uh, Orientalist construction of the world order and racialization of humanity. Sinophobia and the yellow parallelism that heightened uh, anti-Asian, East Asian violence during the pandemic recalls the mobilization of Islamophobia and anti-Muslim racism that securitized Canadian state and repressed Arabs and Muslims within Canada and across the world as well as justified various NATO-backed Western military in intervention in the Middle East. Today, Sinophobia also mobilizes and recalls the yellow parallelisms that enacted Chinese exclusion acts and interned Japanese Canadians and continues today in Western economic and geopolitical contests with China. Thus, the racisms produced through Orientalism are realized through various practices by the state, media, and public, and the public that police an international division of humanity inside and outside the national borders, deploying race, gender, and various border orientalist discourses are constitute, um, uh, that monitor and regulate and exp exploit uh, racial minorities. In short, these are course, discourses are constitute uh, of racism produced through various infrastructures of border imperialisms. Okay, I don't know what I'm reading right now. <laughs> uh, securitization and militarization 
post-racial sanitization of racial references rely on narratives of democracy and liberation. But the racisms that happens in the West um, are very much tied to the racialization of communities over there. Although anti-Muslim and anti-Asian racisms are clearly selective and specific to the political context and who they penalize, they can also be flexible in their targets through the ambiguity of racial uh, boundaries, leading us to rush to distinguish ourselves from the others and invest affectively and ideologically in white supremacy by aligning ourselves to racial capitalism and Western liberal democracy. Asians, Muslims, and Arabs have at times been seen as white aid adjacent with a precarious hold on the status. Islamophobia casts a wide scope and impact on Sikhs and many other black and brown people appearing Muslim. Likewise, despite its alienness, China was initially cast as proximate to whiteness in European historical accounts until the decline of the Qin Empire and the battle for control over trade and territories began. The yellow peril discourse of which Sinophobia is a close relative has been its target, has seen its target move historically between Japanese and Canadian identified people, as well as among different groups appearing East Asian. According to Chen and Yates, the first usage of yellow, yellow peril was actually in 1684 in reference to South Asians. While the US government formally referred to Western Asian diplomatic relations under the heading of yellow peril until 1992, when Senator Daniel Inouye advocated to have it changed. Two Europeans, the rest of the world are interchangeable um, uh, hordes perilous to a Western way of life. Thus racialization has been highly adaptable process that is very effective in maintaining racial hierarchy and white supremacy. Since 9-11, US has, the US has consolidated its military and security infrastructures, all, of, all in the name of de democratization, legitimizing its proxy wars, military bases, pr prisons, and torture. On the other side of the world, China has also appropriated this securitization playbook when it framed Uyghur separatism and Wahhabism through the lens of terrorism and justified its counterterrorism infrastructures with its own 9-11 narrative. The cooperative harmony in these narratives was mostly undisturbed until July 2021 when Mike Pompeo used Xinjiang to escalate its own war with China. The West is now engaging its attention to the inscrutable and pervasively embedded jihadist and communist lurking in the shadows amongst us, which finds the earlier depictions uh, in, for example, Fu Manchu and the yellow octopus with many tentacles attacking the US Marine. Um, both Fu Manchu and Osama bin Laden are shadowy, evil, and sly figures representing racialized peoples who must be stopped and annihilated. They are not just outsiders, but threats to liberal democracies. China's economic rise and oil rich resources in the Middle East continue to fuel American imperial desire for dominance over a unipolar world. The fixation on religious fundamentalism and communist authoritarianism conceptualized as the polar opposites of liberal democracy and human rights promote Western public support for Western military in intervention in different parts of the world and suppression of people constructed as enemies. The increased support for military intervention is correlated strongly with anti-Muslim and anti-Asian sentiments that fan the flames of white nationalism and racism against those constructed as non-citizens and interlopers. Yet the West has become protectors of Islamic minority in China, while Muslims are being bombed by Western proxy wars in other parts of the world that further precaritize racialized people. In the meantime, there is an incredible figure reported by Democracy Now! and Reveal News that the US State Department record shows that one year after the withdrawal from Afghanistan, um, of the 66,000 that applied through the humanitarian parole process, only 123 applicants were approved with a hefty $575 application fee, long wait, and complex paperwork compared with 68,000 successful Ukrainian applicants who applied online with no application cost. Moreover, feminist resistance and progressive politics have been mobilized in anti-China and anti-Muslim discourses. 
Western worldview and American ex exceptionalism and civilizational clash with China, communism and Islam are promoted through funding agencies, the export of American cultures and corporate media control. The evangelical zeal in de democratizing racialized peoples is unquestioned as good. Um, the development and consolidation of global alliances for intelligence and military resources sharing, like Five Eyes, Quad, AUKUS, expand the global reach of American imperialism and surveillance. While Muslims are imprisoned on flimsy pretext and associations to terrorism, East Asians and particularly Chinese are suspects and spies under hyper surveillance and racial profiling in the West and, and subjected to everyday racism. In this context, diasporic Chinese academics report making extra effort to dissociate themselves from China and Chinese state actions, regardless of their distance and affiliation with the Chinese state. The introduction of Bill S-237 is another attempt to install the Foreign Registry Act to specifically name foreign nationals from and associations with China as potential threats to our security similar to the introduction like uh, in the likes of B Bill C-36 and the Anti-Terrorism Act in 2001, which effectively took away the civil liberties of many Muslim Canadians and limited political dissension while constructing Muslims as security threats in the interests of nationalism and founding Islamo Islamophobia. Thus, as imperial powers, Western states exert their power over racialized peoples internally and police transnational white supremacy across borders. Our mainstream media has been complicit in American intervention in Iraq and elsewhere in how they report and how and what they fail to report. Any views unaligned with Western narratives are subject to dismissal, sanctions, and delegitimation. While the failures, negativities, and foibles of Afghanistan, China, and Russia dominate news headlines to feed us a daily diet of Western superiority, exceptionalism, and normativity. Uh, the word uh, Palestine in the meantime was tabooed at CBC for a while. Similarly, Senator Yan Pao Wu, um, who questioned the Canadian residential school experience of indigenous school children in relation to China's human rights record, led to his being singled out by CBC as being the mouthpiece for the Chinese government. The information war over what news we consume in the West has been escalating even as attention is directed mainly to the censorship practices of communist and Islamic authoritarian states. Code Pink, the anti-war organization based in the US, uh, petitioned B PBS to release the documentary Voices from the Frontline, China's War on Poverty, calling the ban a censorship that goes against PBS mandate for expression of diverse perspectives. As well, RT America has been largely banned from our airwaves and social media as well since uh, Russian invasion in, U in Ukraine. We are living under, a me under media censorship as much as people in China or Middle Eastern states are. The hypocrisy of the American-led cabal is making it, increasing, it increasingly possible for an international racial consciousness against colonialism and imperialism. There has been no Western accountability in the uh, military and securitization violence and economic san sanctions that they have pursued uh, to the detriment of racialized peoples across the world. With globalization and mobile technology, we have increased access to news channels coming out of Asia, Middle East, and other southern countries that have been questioning American and NATO actions. Non-corporate news, social media influencers, and citizen journalists on various sides of the political spectrum with large following have cracked American liberal democratic uh, hegemony. If we are not in a moment of an international racial rev revolution, there are certainly alternative circulations of people and information across the world with the possibility of more other, other encounters that do not fit easily into the colonizer-colonized relationship. We have also learned from the experiences of Muslim and Arab communities who have borne the brunt of the imperialist agenda in the last few hundred, the last uh, four, uh, 20 years. Their phrase and gaping holes in the Orientalist fictions and sustained American, um, that sustain American exceptionalism. Witness the fact that the support, uh, that support for NATO action in Ukraine in response to Russian aggression is neatly divided along racial lines. 
this may be the moment uh, to build political consciousness among developing uh, third world peoples and mount challenge, uh, a challenge to the Western world order. China's imperialist uh, potential cannot be dismissed at the same time for sure, as well diasporic Asians are associated with alien capital and the model minority myth, a role that is assigned uh, to well-heeled Asians and other immigrants stringently selected by our immigration system to promote racial capitalism. In the most telling scene in the all Asian cast film, Crazy Rich Asians, we all cheered as the Asian Singaporean character triumphantly sacked the racist manager by buying the hotel. Vijay Prashad also uh, reports that, that the potential for third world project was thwarted at least in part by the enthusiastic endorsement of the neoliberal path by global elites in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. The third world project is yet unfulfilled as neoliberal interests mobilize racial capital and deploy nationalism. The power and violence of Western-based racial capitalism and imperialism is still experienced everywhere in war and surveillance. Um, although the legitimacy of Western power is questioned, global capital rests in the hands of a few by proximate events, uh, elements to, to sustain the racial world order. To heed Mignolo's call for epistemic disobedience, we need to question the very definition and organization of nation state world order and redefine or wrest back uh, democracy from the West. Nation states have not served decolonials at all. We need to be much more nuanced in our critique of Muslim patriarchy or Chinese authoritarianism that have been promulgated in American imperial interests. Um, an interna internationalized transnational feminist and critical race perspectives would help decenter the West. But to go beyond de-Westernization, we need to, as uh, Quan Xing Chen argued, attend to other journeys, not just the ones to the West in understanding each other, to do more comparative studies and use multiple reference points beyond the West. Or as Sri, Sri La Roy argues, even though South-South relationships are difficult, it is time to stop focusing on our relationship with the West. Oh, we still need to deal with the hypervigilance for sure. We, we need to explore the specificities of differently racialized communities and racisms and a worldview that is built on common experience of anti-colonial, anti-racist struggle of past solidarity groups like the non-aligned movement, third worldism, or coalescing around um, the umbrella of black. As uh, Vijay Prashad points out, it is possible to learn from our failures and the experience of the struggle itself. But this cannot be done if we do not explore the unsanctioned other, other historical intimacies that can generate a different potential to our future and knowledge um, knowledges. We need to challenge the, new nas the, the national subject um, and, and as well as uh, the, the capitalists foundation of how the, this world continues to uh, be about uh, fighting for supremacy and dominance. The West is still unable to grasp that there are a minority in the globe or how racism actually works in the everyday lives of racialized people. The utter lack of accountability and ability to see the perspective of racialized people makes it possible for someone like Tucker Carlson to claim ball-facedly that the British was a benign colonizer who left India with a civilization, language, and institutions that are still in use today. We can leave the ignorant West to their own devices and build more bridges amongst ourselves. Thank you.